Hi hey everyone, this is in continuation of our microbiology laboratory series in bacterial staining. Um, in the previous video, we, I have presented um, the simple staining and also with how to prepare your bacterial smears. Um, in this lecture, we will be looking at um, different differential visualization um, of your staining techniques using the gram stain and um, some of the staining procedures which will help us visualize the the internal compartments of your bacterial cell morphology so in this um, first lesson we will be learning about gram stains okay gram stains um, in general you'll see here the the my photo micrograph of your candida albicans from a vaginal swab so uh, you will notice the colors of pink and purple and um, the shapes of these microbes there are small oval chlamydospores which are two to four micrometer in diameter in our learning objectives once you have completed the, this experiment you should be able to first is uh, is to explain the chemical and the theoretical basis for differential staining procedures next would be to describe the chemical basis for your gram stain and to perform the procedure to differentiate between the two principal groups of bacteria which is your gram positive and your gram negative in principle differential staining requires the use of um, at least four chemical reagents and these four chemical reagents are applied sequentially to a heat fixed smear and um, we call the first reagent as your primary stain okay um, again differential staining its uh, its purpose is to impart color okay to all the cells and um, the second stain is what we call as your mordant okay this is used to intensify the color of the primary stain so in order for uh, to establish a color contrast the third reagent used is a decolorizing agent because based on the uh, chemical composition of your cellular components your decolorizing agent may remove the primary stain from the entire cell or only for um, from certain cell structures the the final reagent is the counter stain Okay. your counter stain has a contrasting color to that of the primary stain and uh, following the colorization the primary stain is not washed out the counter stain cannot be absorbed and the cell or its components will retain the color of the primary stain if the primary stain is removed the decolorized cellular components will accept and assume the the contrasting color of your counter stain in this way the cell types or their structures can be distinguished from each other on the basis of the strain that is being retained so going back okay gram stains the most important differential stain used in bacteriology and is the gram stain and it is named after the figure on your right which is Dr. Hans Christian Gram. This staining technique is dividing the bacterial cells into its two major groups, gram positive and gram negative, and which is making an essential tool for classification and differentiation of your microorganisms. In this two photo micrograph, it shows here a gram positive and a gram negative cells. The gram stain reaction is based on the difference in the chemical composition of the bacterial cell walls. Gram positive cells have a thick peptidoglycan layer, whereas the peptid pe peptidoglycan layer in your gram negative cells are much thinner and surrounded by. Um, outer lipid containing layers remember that your peptidoglycan is a uh, polysaccharide which is composed of two chemical subunits which is found only in your bacterial cell wall and the subunits are your 
N-acetylglucosamine and N-acetylmuramic acid. With some organisms, okay, in some organisms, um, as the like adjacent um, layers of your peptidoglycan layer are formed, they are cross-linked by what we call as your short chains of peptides by means of a um, transpeptidase enzyme, okay, resulting in the shape and the rigid rigidity of your cell wall. In the cases of the gram-negative bacteria, and several of the gram positive, such as your bacillus, the cross linking of the peptidoglycan layer is direct because the um, bacteria do not have short peptide tails. And early experiments have shown that a gram positive cell, okay, then you did of its cell wall by the action of your lysozyme or penicillin will stain gram negative. Th 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 those are just some of your inclusions. Um, in this figure, we will see here the microscopic observation of cells following steps in your gram staining procedure. The gram stain uses four different reagents. And descriptions of these reagents and their mechanisms of action will follow. Okay, just show here the primary stain, okay, application of your crystal violet. All cells become purple. Your more than, okay, application of your gram's iodine which is um, all cells are purple black your decolorizing agent is your 95% alcohol wash all gram positive cells are purple gram negative cells are colorless and the application of your sephronin gram positive cells are purple okay and gram negative cells are colored pink so you will be learning um, the mechanisms and the procedures in the following slide, so the primary stain is also um, we use in the laboratory. This is named as crystal violet or the huggers. This violet stain is used first and stains all the cells purple. The mordant is a gram's iodine. Okay, this reagent serves not only as a killing agent but it's also a mordant, a substance that kills. Uh, that increases the cell's affinity for a stain. The reagent does this by binding to the primary stain, thus forming an insoluble complex. So you will see in the in your samples, it's like blackish violet or purplish black. Okay, and the resultant crystal violet iodine or the CVI complex serves to intensify the color of the stain. At this point, we see the cells as purple black. Um, the photo in your background is a French Indian, a printed or um, painted textile in the manner of Indian productions, which is used more than they're using more than to fix the dye. So this is just for in relation to more than. Okay, this is an artwork. Decolorizing agent, and this is ethyl alcohol. This reagent serves as a dual function is a protein dehydrating agent and as a lipid solvent its action is determined by two factors the concentration of lipids and the thickness of the peptidoglycan layer in your bacterial cell walls in your gram negative cells this alcohol increases the porosity of the cell by dissolving the lipids in the outer the outer layers. Thus, um, your CVI complex can be more easily removed from the thinner okay, and less highly cross-linked peptidoglycan layer. Therefore, the washing out effect of this alcohol facilitates the release of your unbound CVI complex, leaving the cells colorless or unstained. And the much thicker in your gram-positive cells um, thicker peptidoglycan layer um, the more stringent the retention of your CVI complex okay um, as the pores are made smaller due to the dehydrating effect of the alcohol thus the tightly bound primary stain complex is difficult to remove okay and the cell the, the cells will remain purple note okay take note that um, be careful not to over colorize the 
and also or over decolorize the smear with alcohol because it will affect your results and lastly the counter stain which is the saffronin which is a final reagent which is used to stain pink those cells that have been previously decolorized since only gram negative cells undergo decolorization they may not now absorb the counter stain okay gram positive cells retain the purple color of the primary stain so you'll see the photo on your on your right is a saffronin o in in aqueous solution it's the color like reddish okay preparing adequately stained smears requires the following precautions okay the most critical phase of the procedure is the decolorization step which is based on the ease of your uh with which the cvi complex is released from the cell remember that over decolorization will result in the loss of the primary stain causing gram positive organisms to sometimes appear gram negative under decolorization however okay um it will not completely remove your cvi complex so again sometimes gram positive organisms will appear gram negative or 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 some gram negative organisms appear gram positive strict adherence to all of these instructions will help remed remedy part um, of the difficulty but individual experience and practice are the keys to correct decolorization and it's imperative that between the applications of the reagents we thoroughly wash the slides under the running water or water applied with an eyedropper this removes excess reagent and prepares the slide for application of your subsequent reagent the, the the best gram stained preparations are made with fresh cultures uh, those cultures that are not older than 24 hours and as cultures age especially in the case of your gram positive cells your organisms tend to lose their ability to stain to retain the primary stain and may appear to be gram variable and that is some cells will appear purple while while some of the cells will appear pink so in your clinical application your gram staining okay it is being used as your first diagnostic cells um you'll see here again just a brief background of the 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 cells uh, cell membrane okay or the 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 morphology of the cells between your gram positive on your left and your gram negative on your right you'll see here it's much more thicker it, okay the, the there is a tight cross linked cross links and this is your gram negative which is like stained with uh, this is one this first the purple stain and your your saffronin which is the counter stain so as a first diagnostic uh, test the gram stain is a diagnostic staining procedure that can be done on a body fluids tissue biopsies throat cultures samples from abscesses where when the infection is suspected and more and clinically important results are obtained much more rapidly from staining than from culturing the specimen and the results of the gram stain will aid a clinical lab in determining which additional tests may be required for identifying the bacterial strain in in question once the bacterial gram type shape and the orientation are being determined a physician can choose um, the appropriate antibiotic to treat patient and just a tip for success for students um, we have three st uh, three tips in this um, slide the first is to proper slide preparation okay proper slide preparation is key to successful staining okay because incorrect uh, incorrect heat fixation will affect the number of bacteria that will be present during the staining and fixation okay that was not hot enough or too short will not allow the cells to adhere to the glass slide properly and just like the the just like your um bacterial smears okay the cells will be rinsed away by the multiple stain and rinse steps conversely um overheating okay overheating will result in the destruction of your cell 
and in-cell debris adhering to cells. Few if any cells will remain intact for the staining process. Next will be the timing of the decolorizing step may be the most important aspect of the procedure. It's more about timing over decolorizing with an incorrect alcohol solution or allowing the slide to decolorize too long. Again, will remove your CVI complex by causing extensive damage to the cell membrane and also with the cell wall, even on a gram positive cell. Alternatively, decolorizing for too short a time period will not remove enough CVI complexes. In the safranine, okay, stained cells will appear to be darker in color and could be mistaken for a light purple gram positive stained cell. And lastly, the age of the culture or colony being stained may impact again the gram stain results. The best gram stain preparations are made with fresh cultures that are not more than 24 hours of age and as cultures age especially in the case of the gram positive cells the organisms tend to lose their ability to uh, retain the primary stain and may appear to be gram variable okay that is some cells become appear will appear purple while other will appear pink and this is the procedure the the artist uh, the artist sketch for the procedure with your your gram staining again first crystal violet gently wash off the stain with tap water apply your grams iodine for one minute and gently wash the grams iodine with tap water apply 95 percent alcohol as a decolorizing agent until it runs almost clear gently wash off with tap water Counter stained with saffronine for 45 seconds and then gently wash out the saffronine with tap water. And lastly, we need to uh, blood dry it with the bibulous paper. Now, in your clinical application, this is diagnosing the leprosy or Hansen's disease and lung infections. How do we do that? Okay, using the um, your gram stains. Um, the cell walls of bacteria belonging to the genera Mycobacterium and Nocorgia contain your mycolic acid and they are very resistant to the penetration of your water-soluble uh, water stains such as your gram stain, okay? And they can lead to a gra false gram-positive results. Acid-fast stains are medically important in diagnosing Mycobacterium species which cause tuberculosis, leprosy, and other infections. Your genus Nucardia, which is a causative agent for many lung infections, are all, is also being identified by your acid-fast staining methods. In, in, in the future uh, presentations, we will be learning more of the, the diagnostic um, tools okay, using the staining techniques in your uh, microbes but for our next presentation we will be uh, talking about the differential staining for visualization of your bacterial cell structures once we're done with this you should be able to explain the chemical basis for the spore and capsule stains next we will perform the procedure to differentiate between bacterial spore and your vegetative cell forms next to perform the procedure to distinguish the capsular material from your bacterial cell and the first method is what we call as the spore stain or the Schaffer fulton method in principle members of your anaerobic genera clostridium and the sulf photomaculum and the aerobic genus bacillus are examples of organisms that have the capacity to exist either as your metabolically active vegetative cells or as a highly resistant metabolically inactive cells which uh, we call as your spores when environmental conditions are become unfavorable for continuing vegetative cellular activities okay particularly with the exhaustion of your nutritional carbon source these cells have the cap capacity to undergo sporogenesis and will give rise to a new 
intracellular structure we call as your we call it as your endospores okay they are surrounded with impervious layers and we call them as your spore coats as a condition continues to worsen the endospore is being released from the degenerating vegetative cell and becomes an independent cell and we call them a free spore because of the chemical composition of your spore layers the spore is resistant to damaging effects of excessive heat freezing radiation desiccation and chemical agents as well um, the most commonly employed microbiological states and with the return of favorable in favorable environmental conditions your free spores okay may revert to a metabolically active and less resistant vegetative cell through the process of germination we'll see that in the next figure that the sporogenesis and germination are not means of reproduction but merely mechanisms that ensure cell survival under all environmental conditions in practice your spore stain uses two different uh, reagents an alternative method known as your domer method okay it's widely published and uses uh, your negrosin which may be found on certain websites such as your microbelibrary.org as the counter stain in this figure you will see a life cycle of your spore forming bacterium so your um, your free spore okay, will germinate after favorable um, environmental conditions and then it rub the spore coat will rupture it will become a vegetative cell perform the binary fission in favorable environmental conditions then they reproduce they multiply the other hand your vegetative cell if it's on on unfavorable uh, if it feels or uh, experiences an unfavorable environmental conditions they will form a four spore now an endospore and a degenerating vegetative cell and developing a spore coat so your spore forming bacterium has a a certain life cycle something like this so the first uh, method uh, the first procedure for your scaffer footed method is the application of your primary stain your primary stain is what we call as your malachite green your malachite green unlike uh, unlike your most vegetative cells type of uh, types that's stained by common procedures okay the free spore because of its impervious uh, coats will not accept your primary stain easily okay this is um, the, the the first the primary stain will be um, penetrated okay by applying heat okay after we apply the after we apply the primary stain and heat the smear both the vegetative cell and the spore will appear green next is your decolorizing agent which is your water once the spore accepts the malachite green it cannot be decolorized by tap water which removes only the excess primary stain the spore re will remain green on the other hand the stain does not demonstrate a strong affinity for for vegetative cell components the water removes it and the cells will um, be colorless again another decolorizing agent is your saffronin this is a contrasting red stain which is used as the second reagent to color the decolorized vegetative cells which will absorb the counter stain and appear red okay the, the spores again will retain the green okay of the primary stain so showing you a spore stain showing free spores and your vegetative bacilli your free spores colored in green vegetative cells in, uh, in in red your endospores and your free spores again so how do we apply this in clinic in identification of dangerous spore forming bacteria you will see in the background is a skin anthrax lesion on this guy's neck 
spore-forming bacteria can have extremely negative health effects. These bacteria will include Bacillus anthracis that causes anthrax and certain Clostridia bacteria which are the causative agents for tetanus, gas gangrene, food poisoning, and your pseudomembranous colitis. Differential stains can stain endospores inside the bacterial cells as well as free spores to identify these pathogenic bacteria. On this micrograph, you'll see a colonic pseudomembrane as may be seen in Clostridium difficile colitis, a type of infectious colitis. In, in, in summary, you will see here the procedure of um, this differential staining technique. This uh, first is the flood, uh, flood the smears with malachite green and steam over a beaker of water placed on a hot plate. Cool and wash off the stain with tap water. Okay, the water will serve as your decolorizing agent. Counter stain with your saffronine for 30 seconds. Wash off with water and blood dry with your Bible use paper. This is your spore staining procedure. Next method is your capsule stain. We also call it as your Anthony method. In principle, a capsule is a gelatinous outer layer that is secreted by the cell and surrounds and adheres to the cell wall. It's not common to all organisms. Cells that have a heavy capsule are generally virulent and capable of producing diseases. Since the structure protects bacteria against the normal phagocytic activities of host cells. Chemically, the capsular material is composed mainly of complex polysaccharides such as your levans, dextrans, and celluloses. Um, you will see here is a diagram of a typical prokaryotic bacterial cell. The outer red layer in this diagram is what we call as your capsule, which is distinct from a cell envelope. This bacterium is a gram-positive as its cell, in, uh, you'll see your cell envelope and comprises a single cell membrane in orange, okay, this one, and a thick peptidoglycan containing the cell wall, which is in color purple. Going back, in principle, the capsule staining is more difficult than other types of differential staining procedures because the capsular materials are water-soluble and may be dislodged and removed with vigorous washing. We should not heat smears because the resultant sh cell shrinkage may create a clear zone around the organism that is an artifact that can be mistaken for the capsule. The, 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 the capsule stain uses two reagents, a primary stain and a decolorizing agent. Primary stain again is crystal violet which is 1% aqueous. The a violet stain is applied to a non-heat fixed smear. At this point, the cell and the capsular material take on the dark color. Your decolorizing agent is your copper sulfate 20% because the capsule is again non-ionic Unlike the bacterial cell, the primary stain adheres to the capsule but does not bind to it. In the capsule staining method, copper, copper sulfate is used as a decolorizing agent rather than water and the copper sulfate washes the purple primary stain out of the capsular material without removing the stain bound to your cell. Well, at the same, well, at the same time, the decolorized capsule absorbs the copper sulfate and the capsule appears blue in contrast to the deep purple color of your cell. So in your capsule stain, you will he see here your enlarged illustration of your cap completed capsule stain using your Anthony method, um, your cell in, in purple and the capsule in white. This is a photomicrograph of a capsule stain caps, uh, capsulated diplococci. Now, in your um, capsule staining procedure, you will generally see this um, summary. Again, place several drops of crystal violet stain on a clean glass slide. Aseptically transfer three loopfuls of culture to the stain and gently mix it using the loop. With a clean glass slide, spread the mixture to form a thin smear 
wash the smear with 20% copper sulfate solution and gently blot dry with bibulous paper. This again is your capsule staining procedure or also known as your Anthony method. And uh, for the last clinical application, you'll see on the back on, on the background is a, is a chest radiograph of an 88 year old man about one week after onset of fever, fatigue, and mild coughing. Lab det test detected um, both your influenza A virus and your hemophilus influenza. It shows a multifocal patchy consolidation um, mainly on the upper your upper right uh, your right upper loop. So encapsulated bacterial pneumonia in this clinical application, the virulence of an organism is increased by the presence of a capsule since the capsule protects the organism from phagocytosis by white blood cells and inhibits the antibody or complement fixation. The water-soluble polysaccharide and or the polysaccharide composition of the bacterial capsule makes staining more difficult. Thus, gram-negative bacteria that forms capsules will include the Haemophilus influenza and your Klebsiella pneumonia. Gram-positive bacteria that form capsules which includes Bacillus anthracis and your Streptococcus pneumoniae. So if your bacterial infection is not being cleared or responding to antibiotic therapy as expected, staining of isolated organisms to determine the presence of capsule may be granted. Alright, so this is the end of your microbial staining. Uh, we've learned um, the differential stains, the gram staining, to better visualize the, the some components of your bacterial cells. So again, thank you so much for listening. And if you have comments, suggestions, or feedback, don't forget to comment your suggestions down below. Thank you so much and stay safe.